the racist cunt, the racist cunt Walpole, Laura Ingram, is delusional to even think that the GOP voters will grow tired of Trump because they rebel, they rebel on his crimes and they love the fact that he's committing crimes just out in the open. Now Liz, Ch- now, Liz Cheney had lost her, um, lost her, um, her, um, her thing the other day. She lost like, her position of power. Now, Liz Cheney's loss demonstrates that for the GOP-based corruption is a future and not a bug of authoritarian politics. Now Donald Trump's, um, Donald Trump's in the headlines again, and as usual, it's because of, of his sinister and criminal activity. And this time, there's an added bonus of suspected espionage. Likely, con- likely it's centered on nuclear secrets because Trump's criminal um, aesthetic is... Is um is as understated as his tacky gold plate in New York penthouse. Now, unsurprisingly, this is causing some in the GOP elite to occasionally slip up, and allow and allow their longing for Trump to just go away and peek out. The country the country is exhausted. This is what foe host the racist cunt Laura Ingram said Monday on a right wing podcast. Um, they're exhausted by the battle, the constant battle that they may believe that well, maybe it's time to turn the page. If we can get someone who has all of Trump's policies, who's not Trump. But, but we don't want Trump, and we don't want any of his policies because his policies were pretty shitty. Um, they didn't really, they didn't really, his, um, Trump's policies didn't really help anybody at all. So, of course, Ingram fails to remember that the majority of the country has always opposed Trump. Trump lost a popular vote by millions in 2016 and 2020, but like most Republican pundits, she habitually completes the country with Republican voters who are basically, she refers to them as a minority and just one with disproportionate power to serious flaws in the Constitution. Now, this is, now putting poor choice, um, the, now, putting um, poor um, word choice aside, and, um, the racist cunt Ingram's argument is basically that the corruption is finally wearing thin, and that the Republican primary voters may very well be ready to nominate someone else in 2024, someone who was just as fascist and racist, but without all the crime and corruption, someone like, like um, well, let's put it, Florida's governor Ron DeSatanis, who is even more, um, um, more fascist and, and, uh, and a dictator than Trump. But he appears to have a lot less personal drama due to spending his non-work hours powered down the recharging station. And um, unsurprisingly, the racist cunt Ingram is getting um, um is getting livid um livid pushback from Trump from Trump sycophant, um sycophants like um like another fake news channel um Newsmax called, um the host Eric Bowling basically went off on um the racist cunt Ingram on Tuesday. What do you mean, no Trump Bowling wind? What's wrong with you? Um, basically, um, what's wrong with the people that vote for Trump? I said, basically, um, they're inbred, and they basically have no life, basically. So this debate between Ingram and Bowling is refracted through their um, personal desires. Ingram's job is secure. Trump or no Trump. Um, and so she's likely just feeling personally exhausted by def- by, def- by defending the utterly defensible night after night. Bowling um, at the fake news channel Newsmax where, he, um, Newsmax, where he landed after being fired after sexual harassment allegations at Foe, only because of his skills as a Trump sycophantic nut- nutlicker, but while their views are defined entirely by their career ambitions, it is it is a reasonable to ask. It's reasonable to ask who was right. Will Republican voters finally get sick of Trump, or they are they are they sticking by him no matter how cartoonish his crimes is? The answer is going to be the latter. Basically, no matter what, they're going to stick to him. Um, yeah, I know there. I know there's polling and focus group data that suggest otherwise, but Trump will easily knock out his primary competitors in 2024, as he did back in 2016 with the. Um, Pariah with the with his pathetic bullying that souls rolls the GOP base, and now more crucially, this this exhaustion argument fails to understand that Trump's criminality is not something that the Republican voters merely tolerate. It is central to his appeal to Republican voters, especially the primary voters. And Trump is a unique figure in American politics in two major ways. First, no other squatter has come even close to Trump in terms of corruption and criminality. His rap sheet of sexual assault, financial crime, fraud. Election cheating, attempted election theft, and blackmail schemes is so long is so long that anyone who tries to recite to recite it um, all invariably forgets another dozen scandals. Second, no ex squatter has ever been so powerful, at least in the modern era. There's a reason. There's reason. There's a reason people who leave the office never run again, even if they are popular, like say Barack Obama. They know that their party's voters are usually ready for some fresh blood. So Trump's criminality helps explain his cult-like hold over the GOP base. His um, degeneracy is, uh, is aspirational to these voters. They'd like to imagine that they too are among uh, that they are along for the ride of, of, of floating above law and custom. The audacity of the January 6 insurrectionists um, illustrates um, this phenomenon. The conveyor belt into jail for them illustrates the delusional nature of it all. The appeal of Trump's malevolence goes beyond the rights fantasies of reality TV villainy. It's about ideology. Fascism and corruption, fascism and corruption are as inseparable as Rudy Colludi and Chief Herodi. 
Now, fascism, authoritarianism, and whatever the fuck you want to call it, it's an idea. It's an ideology that exists to refute modern ideals like um, democracy and um, and a, and equality under the law. Instead, it's about worshiping power and enforcing strict social hierarchies, where the empowered class gets to do what the fuck they want, while the oppressed class have to live under the yoke. Op- openly flouting the law, op- openly flo- openly f- openly flouting the law, isn't just as um is, isn't just a demonstration of power. It's a tribute to the fascist ideal. Where the I, where the law is, some, is something that only applies to the hated out groups, and yes, yes, I'm familiar with Frank Will Hoyt's um, famous 2018 blog comment, and you're and you're about to quote at me. So Trumpers aren't hypocrites for wanting Hillary Clinton locked up for not committing any real crime, but hoping Trump escapes justice, crushing the will of law, and demonstrating that the only thing that matters is tribalism, and the, and the power is the entire point of Trumpism. A fascist leader who isn't also corrupt and a criminal doesn't make sense. What is the point of having all that power if you're not going to flaunt your ability to get away with behavior that lesser people go straight to jail for? And plus, it drives Democrats crazy when Trump gets away with yet another crime and nothing tickles the GOP um, um, aerogenous zones like infuriated Democrats. Now, Representative Liz Cheney's um, devastating primary loss in Wyoming Wyoming Tuesday night perfectly perfectly sums this up and illustrates it. Sure, there are a lot of factors that feed right into this, including including the nonstop villainization of of her and the right-wing media, and, of course, Republican misogyny. Ultimately, however, Cheney's defeat was a result of her rejecting the central motivating concern of Trumpism, which is the, which is the liberation of law, of, of, of the rule of law in favor of a society organized solely on the basis of status and power. And Cheney is rigidly right-wing in most ways, but she drew the line on how much impunity power should a person like Trump have. For, um, for the Republican primary voters, that is inexcusable. What good is power if you still have to live by some of the rules that you enforce on others? Now, having a squatter or a president who gets away with serious crimes, but Black Lives Matter, um, protesters and Democrats are imprisoned and tear gassed for no real reason, is pure heaven for the power-obsessed fascists that make up the most enthusiastic um, portion of the GOP base. Now, there, of course, <coughs> are other Republican voters who are quite, quite as obsessive. Um, as obsessive, though, the, the, but those people tend to vote less in primaries, and that's why the increasingly unhinged radicals increasingly dominate the GOP candidate list. It's not just Trump, either. Now, from Doug Mastriano in Pennsylvania to Kerry Lake in Arizona to Shooter Dixon in Michigan, these candidates who are performing well with the prim- uh, um, they they performed well with the Republican primary voters even in the swing states, and and they are and they and, and those are who are, and those who are running on the platform of pure authoritarianism. They demand total immunity for people in their tribe while passing laws to destroy people they don't like for things that shouldn't be crimes like aborting people, um, the, like aborting problem pregnancies or admitting that gay people exist. That more than anything is what their voters want. Defending Trump for possible espionage may, may, may make Ingram's job more annoying, but don't cry for the woman who made herself rich feeding fascist lies to, to an aging GOP base. Trump is exhausting, but that's exactly why his base fucking loves him. He's, he's, um, ba- he's basically successfully built a fantasy that titillates him, the man who could commit crimes without limit, and never faces a moment of real accountability for any of the crimes he commits. Sure, they may feel moments of doubt since flagrant criminal really since flag, flagrant criminal really isn't a good image for a general election candidate, but when primary voting um, time comes around, the vicarious thrill of getting away with it will always trump will always trump the Republican voters' more rational concerns. The only way to break the cycle is for Trump to face real criminal penalties and prove that he does not possess the superhuman powers his base imagines him to have. So if you liked the video, you can get the video, like, and subscribe to my channel, RBW King. You can also hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when the new video comes out. If you want to support my work even further, you can donate to my Patreon link, which you can find in the about section of YouTube. And for just a little, it's a few bucks a month. Your donation can help go a long way. And thanks for listening.